that's what I don't want. Okay. Like that. Tell us what's going on with it then. Right, so we've got the wind is blowing the fire out this side. This is the prominent side. It's the bit that's come through the fastest. I don't want these flames licking out the side of the kiln because it can ignite the wood gas. You can just see down at the bottom corner there. So I'm just going down in to calm it down a little bit. Obviously I've got the smoke in my face so I'm having to guess to a certain extent where it is. <laughs> now I may well open that back up again later in the burn. I'll make my decision. If I can get a nice lot of heat then I won't bother, that'll be fine. But that wasn't ready. I just did that because I didn't want a flare situation. So now that's reduced the risk of a flare. The flares are spectacular, but they're incredibly hot. <laughs> and you have to work very, very fast. Right. come around here Jen you'll see this is being well behaved here and you can start to see that the fire is coming across the bottom of the kiln if you look underneath yeah, then yeah. you can see that the fire is spreading this is what I'm trying to achieve even although we've got wind as the fire comes across the bottom of the kiln by using the sand and damping down that means that the fire has to go to the oxygen which is where I haven't put the sand, so oxygen's still being drawn in there and the fire feeds on that. So it's a, it's a process of getting even heat right throughout the bottom of the kiln. Mm -hmm. So we've got a little way to go here. This is probably another 20 minutes, half an hour maybe. Could be less um, before we've actually got solid embers dropping right by the edge of the kiln. That's the heat that I'm looking for. I'm looking for intensive heat around the shoes that haven't got the hole in because they will in the next couple of hours they will be the only supply of oxygen into the kiln if it's hot by those shoes it automatically starts sucking which is what we're looking for when the chimneys go in it also helps that process right <coughs> oh god it's smoky <laughs> So now we had that little squall, conditions have settled and now we've got a nice column of smoke going up, that's a good thing to see. I'm constantly checking to make sure that the fire is spreading. The fatal mistake is just to stay in one place and just look at one side. You've got to keep looking at the whole burn. sanding down and you can see in here you can see the first bit of woods drop down that's what we're looking for quite close to the edge still not quite there that's just a, a thin piece that's burnt through quickly and dropped we're looking for quite a quite a dense amount of embers sometimes I'll do less I do go sometimes I do go by the heat of the kiln okay um, but nine times out of ten, it's a visual inspection here. Yeah. That's the experience, isn't it? You wouldn't yeah, know by the yeah. heat unless you had been doing it no. for a good I long mean, sometimes while. <laughs> you'll, sometimes you will walk round and even although you haven't got embers right by the edge, I'll see that the kilns change colour, sometimes it glows red. Ah. Um, that is instant shutdown because I don't like my kilns getting that hot. They buckle enough <laughs> without me allowing them to get red hot. You can see where they're all crinkly, sort of around the bottom, yeah. can't you? Well, I'm hoping to put this kiln on its side and try and hammer some of those out this winter. Oh, right! <clears throat> I'm just going to step back so you can see the whole plume. You can all 
also tell when the heat's coming across because the, the sand here gets burnt, gets singed, it goes white. So that's a pretty good indication that we've got a nice lot of heat there. Always got my shovel with me. Mm -hmm. I had done it before and it had flared, and I couldn't remember where I put my shovel. And you just, the last thing you want to do is put yourself into a panic situation. It, you can control it, but you have to uh, keep your wits about you. Yeah. This is probably the greatest adrenaline rush in my life. This is the only thing that really gets me pumping. <laughs> <laughs> it is a huge amount of fire though. It is. When you think that that, that kiln is, was packed to the top, yeah. jam packed with, with wood, and the whole lot is now trying to go up, <laughs> yeah. so sucking in air at the bottom. I'm going to put a bit of sand around that. The kiln's just so not just yet, mister. We're about to get smoked. Yes, yeah, we might have to move. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the smoke clears, I can get back in. Okay, right, so decided to shut down that corner. It's obviously got hot enough. <coughs> I have to say it's a lovely smelling smoke, but it is very thick. I always try and do it as neatly as I can because if I get a flare situation I have to throw the sand on. It's difficult to remember which sections you've shut down and which ones you haven't. Right. If you pile it up neatly, it's a pretty good indicator. Obviously, getting enough oxygen in, yeah. keeping going. Yeah, because it's still coming in from either side. Yeah. I may open it up, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. That smoke's really pumping out fast now. Huge plume. <laughs> Smoke's absolutely beautiful stuff. Another section around there that's coming on quite quickly. So we're going to have one quarter of the kiln that's going to be slightly behind the rest of it. And that's partly due to the fact that it was slow getting going. Right. The smoke putting it out and the other part is but obviously if there is a breeze coming in it's coming in this way <coughs> and that's the leeward side so ah uh, okay basically that side over there is going to be slower 
bring the fire around the kiln. Was it for another couple of minutes? Mm. 